Hey, it's Dave from Somerville Media Center, and I'm here, so that must mean it's time for Some Arts, the monthly calendar show where we provide you with listings of some of the events in and around Somerville for February. So it looks like it's going to be a busy month, so let's just get right to it. A Decolonial Atlas Strategies in Contemporary Art of the Americas is an exhibit that runs from January 16th through April 15th at the Tisch Family Gallery at Tufts University. Drawing from the hemispheric context of the Americas, this exhibit presents recent works by artists from the United States and Latin America who grapple with continued questions of colonialism and post-colonialism highlighting the medium of video as a critical tool for expanded narratives and immersive imagery, as well as painting, photography, sculpture, and works on paper. A symposium will be held Friday, March 2nd at 1230. More information can be found at artgallery.tufts.edu. Attend a weekly memoir writing workshop at the Somerville Public Library, Central Branch on Highland Ave, through March 6th. Take a little time on a wintry evening to relax, reflect, and create. Local writer Elizabeth Moroni will guide you through writing exercises that help you put your past into words. You'll leave with strategies and ideas to keep your writing going. It's free and all levels are welcome, suitable for adults and high school students. No signups are required. The workshops take place on set at, at 7.30 p.m. February 6th, 12th, 27th, and March 6th. More information is at the Somerville Public Library website. On Thursday, March on Thursday, February 8th, go down to the West Branch of the Somerville Public Library in Davis Square to get into the Valentine's Day spirit for an adorable felt craft workshop from 6 to 8 p.m. Make one for yourself or your sweetheart or your best friend or anybody. Crafty expertise and supplies will be provided at no cost to attendees. This program is free and open to the public. The library loves kids crafts, but this program is meant for adults only. Please note that the West Branch Library is not wheelchair accessible and you should contact the city's manager of equity if you want to attend and need access. More information is also at somervillepubliclibrary.org. Hey, podcasting is all the rage right now. And you can sign up for Podcasting 101, which takes place over two sessions here at Somerville Media Center on Friday, February 8th and 22nd from 7 to 8.30 p.m. It's $50 for SMC members and $100 for non-SMC members. Audio-based programming, known as podcasting, has exploded in recent years as a way of communicating stories. And in this class, you can learn how you can create podcasts, as it's taught by Boston Free Radio station manager and podcaster Heather McCormick. This class will review the difference between podcasting and broadcasting, explore different types of content, and discuss how to curate an interesting podcast. Basic use of SMC podcasting recording setup will be demonstrated, and students will be asked to record a podcast interview before the second class which will then cover the use of Audacity, which is freeware, freeware that you can use to edit your podcast. Also covered will be adding copyright-free music, notes on regulations, distribution, and syndication. You can enroll at our website, summervillemedia.org. Throughout February, you can sign up for cooking classes that feature various world cuisines that are, that are organized by the Somerville Arts Council Nibble Program. All classes will be held at Foundation Kitchen at 3 Washington Street and take place from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. And tickets for each program are $50 and available at somervilleartscouncil.org. Here's a few of them. Monday, February 12th, experience like water for chocolate, Mexican mole with Taza chocolate at Foundation Kitchen at 3 Washington Street, like I just said. A native of Durango, Mexico, Estela Calzada, will teach attendees to make mole which is one of Mexico's most famous and romantic dishes. There's a moment in the book, like water for chocolate, when the character Pedro comes into the kitchen to find Tita grinding almonds for her mole, and the two share a charged moment. So much love goes into Tita's cooking. Those who eat her food feel love and even arousal. Whoa! 
This is from the Somerville Arts Council's website. It's a little steamy, if you ask me. Estella worked for two years at Somerville's Tu y Yo, and is currently working at curating the menu at Ole in Inman Square. She's the real deal. The charismatic Estella will speak Spanish while a translator offers a full English translation. Then there's winter warm-up, spicy Somali cooking with Nimko Mahamoud Hassan, Tuesday, February 13th. The January artist of the month, Nimko, is leading a Somali cooking course that is sure to warm you up during this cold February weather. Nimko is a veteran cooking instructor and avid gastronome who only uses the freshest and highest quality ingredients in her cooking. She will share dishes from her home country of Somalia while ending with a favorite from her other home, London. Nimco's vast international experience extends into the kitchen where you will learn how to make a Somali stew with ground beef as a main ingredient in a richly aromatic sauce. Nimco will also teach how to make basaf akhtar, which he refers to as the sriracha of Somalia for its spice and versatility. Finally, there's Peruvian cooking with Jose Barriga, Tuesday, February 27th. Bariga is executive director and founder of Cambridge Food Lab, and he'll bring the cuisine of his home country alive. Peru is currently considered the gastronomic capital of Latin America with its enviable reputation for cuisine after winning the top prize at the prestigious World Travel Awards two years in a row. Historically, Peru is home to the tomato, quinoa, and over 3,800 types of potatoes, which take center stage in a hearty quinoa stew and a classic Peruvian highland dish, potatoes and creamy chili sauce. No meal is complete without wine, or in this case, sangria. Learn how to make your own for your next celebration in this course. On Valentine's Day, sing your broken heart out at the Love Stinks karaoke party and Bagley fundraiser at River Bar at 661 Assembly Row from 8 p.m. to midnight. Enjoy some salty and bitter cocktails from the Campari portfolio. All ticket proceeds are going to benefit Bagley, the Boston Alliance of Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, Queer Youth. And more information can be found at Bagley.org. The party is from 8 p.m. to midnight, and a full dinner menu is available until 10 p.m. The President's Only Cruise comedy show takes place Thursday, February 15th, from 8 to 10 p.m. at the Center for the Arts at the Armory at 191 Highland Ave. Salute yourself and some comedy with fire and fury. There will be, in addition to comedy, ceremonies, legislation, documents, and an appearance by former President Ronald Reagan, featuring comedians Lamont Price, Phoebe Angle, Liam McGurk, Kylie Alexander, Malin Pavlitik, and Erica Lindquist. Sketch comedy from Tropical Goth, and it'll be hosted by Katie McCarthy and Nick Ortolani. Doors are at 7.30 and the show starts at 8. A suggested donation of only $5 is being asked. On Sunday, February 25th, from 4 to 6 p.m., attend the first Somerville Media Center Mixer of the Year at Aeronaut Brewing Company at 14 Tyler Street. Meet media makers from in and around Somerville as you enjoy Aeronaut Microbrew offerings. Find out how you can transform your media idea into media reality at the oldest media access center in the Commonwealth, Somerville Media Center. More information is on our website. Thank you. Our next reader is my friend, Claude Kitten. Everybody say, hi, Claude Kitten. Hi. Hi. Oh, some of you know this book. I'm very excited. It is called Fancy Nancy, because no one knows fancy like Nancy. <laughs> Nancy says, I love being fancy. How many of you guys love being fancy? I can tell some of you already. Very fancy. Yes, yes. She says, I love being fancy. My favorite color is fuchsia. <laughs> That's a fancy way of saying purple 
or pink. I like to write my name with a pen that has a plume. Everyone know what a plume is? Like a big feather. Oh, you do? That's a fancy way of saying feather. And I can't wait to learn French because everything in French sounds fancy. <laughs> Nobody in my family is fancy at all. They never even ask for sprinkles. <laughs> There's a lot they don't understand. Lace trimmed socks do help me play soccer better. Sandwiches definitely taste better when you stick in frilly toothpicks. A princess is supposed to keep her tiara on. What's a fancy girl to do, I ask my doll, Maribel? Her full name is Maribel Lavinia Chandelier. <laughs> then I get an idea that is stupendous. That's a fancy word for great. Maybe I can teach my family how to be fancy. I make an ad and stick it on the fridge. It says, learn to be fancy with lessons from Nancy. Start today, easy, fun, free. <laughs> Do you think you can learn to be fancy? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Good, let's see what happens. Let's see if the family learns. Okay, she's ready for her lesson. Soon there is a knock on my door. My family saw the ad. They want to get started right away. I would. I, would I want to learn everything Nancy can teach me. She is so fancy. The trouble is, my family doesn't own any fancy clothes. That's OK. I go find, what is that fancy word? Oh, yes. I go find some accessories. <laughs> what are accessories? Uh, They're all the fancy stuff you wear, like a necklace or earrings or a boa or a scarf or that. Yes, exactly. Just like that. Some accessories. So Nancy dresses up her family in all of her fancy accessories and says, ooh la la. My family is posh. That's a fancy word for fancy. <laughs> My mom twirls in front of the mirror. Why don't we go somewhere fancy tonight, she says. How about dinner at the King's Crown, Dad suggests. Wow, my parents are acting fancier already. <laughs> May I escort you lovely ladies outside? The limousine is waiting. My dad is our chauffeur. That's a fancy word for driver. When we arrive at the King's Crown, everyone looks up. They probably think we are movie stars. Because they look so fancy. I am so proud of my whole family. They eat with their pinkies up. <laughs> and they call each other darling. <laughs> For dessert, let's have parfaits, my mom says. That's French for ice cream sundaes. <laughs> Amazing, my mother knows French. When our, our, when our parfaits are ready, I curtsy and say merci. Can everyone, here, can you hold this for a second? You guys know how to curtsy? Oh. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no, let's see if I, yes. Curtsy and say merci. I know. I carry the tray like a fancy waiter. Oops, I trip, I slip. The tray does a double flip. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm very nervous to turn the page. Oh no, Nancy says, I don't feel fancy anymore. Covered in parfait. Ooh. And she says, I wanna go home. Everyone say, aww. After 
I get all cleaned up, I put on my dressing gown. Those are fancy words for bathrobe. I feel much better, and I'm finally ready for a parfait. I tell my parents, thank you for being fancy tonight. I love you, my dad says. I love you, my mom says. And all I say back is, I love you. Because there isn't a fancy or better way of saying that. Merci. Merci. Claude. Can we all give Claude a fancy thank you? Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna say it too. <laughs> and now our next friend coming to read is my friend Butch Sassity. Today we're gonna read the snowy day. Has anyone read this before? Yeah. It's a good one. All right. That's a lot of pages. Whoa. Here we go. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled very high along the street to make a path for walking. Has anyone seen big snow piles around? <laughs> yeah. Crunch, crunch, crunch. His feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this. He walked with his toes pointing in like that. Do you ever make patterns in the snow with your feet? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks. And he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. Some of you have read this before. Yeah. <laughs> no, so you got it right. I haven't read it. <laughs> it was a stick. Ah! Good job. A stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. Down fell the snow. Plop on top of Peter's head. Has that ever happened to you? Snow falls right on top of us. <laughs> he thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough. Not yet. So he made a smiling snowman. Have you ever made a snowman before? Yeah! yeah. A, a really big one? No! Small one? Yeah. <laughs> and he made snow angels. Have you ever made snow angels before? Yeah! Yeah! It's a lot of fun. Yeah. He pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great, big, tall, heaping mountain of snow and slid all the way down. Have you gone sledding before? No. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going up ramps. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going up ramps. He picked up a handful of snow and another and still another. He packed it round and firm and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into his warm house. I wonder what's going to happen to the snowball. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. And he thought and thought and thought about them. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. His pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. You, you know it? I know it, I know it. You knew it too? While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted all the snow away. 
But then he woke up. But then he woke up. His dream was gone, and the snow was everywhere. New snow. Snow was falling. After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall, and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. And that is the end of the book. We played in the snow. <laughs> do you guys we do? Do you want to read your special book all together? Do you want? Should, is that what we should do? Do our last. Let's let's do that, and then I think some of the kids want to ask you guys questions. If that's okay. Yeah. Perfect. Sure. All right. Ready to do this together? Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'll, I'll handle the book, and then you guys. Yeah. Go for sure. Sure. Are you no, guys ready no. for one more story? Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think that was loud enough. Are you ready for one more story? Yeah. I, I'm not sure I heard everybody. Are you ready for one? Yes. <laughs> That's a fancy way of saying yes. 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 <laughs> We're going to read this last book. It's called It's Okay to Be Different. I do. It's okay to be missing a tooth or two or three. I've been missing like more than um eight. It's okay to need some help. Uh, it's okay to have a different nose. I do not have a long nose. It's okay to be a different color. And it's okay to have no hair. <laughs> It's okay to have big ears. It's okay to have wheels. It's okay to be small, medium, large, extra large. <laughs> it's okay to wear glasses. It's okay to talk about your feelings. Exactly. That lion saying, I feel like I want to roar. Can you guys all roar? It's okay to eat macaroni and cheese in the tub. <laughs> I never, ever, ever, ever gonna do it. It's okay to say no to bad things. It's okay to come from a different place. It's okay to be embarrassed. JP, are you ever embarrassed? Uh, sometimes, and that is okay. <laughs> it's okay to come in last. And it's okay to dance by yourself. Yeah. By ourselves. By ourselves. Okay, I'm not looking. I'm closing my eyes. <laughs> <clears throat> it's okay to have a pet worm. <laughs> like worm. Or two. <laughs> or three. <laughs> or five. <laughs> yes. It's okay to be proud of yourself. <laughs> it's okay to have different moms. It's not okay. It's okay to have different dads. It's not okay to have different dads. It's okay to be adopted. It's not okay to be adopted. It's okay to be adopted. It's okay to have an invisible friend. I would love to have an invisible friend. I'm wearing no clothes, so I'll totally be invisible. <laughs> It's okay to do something nice for someone. It's okay to lose your mittens. 
And it's okay to get mad. That is a mad looking skunk. It's okay to do something nice for yourself. Look at how many scoops of ice cream those are. That is so many scoops. That's a lot of scoops. I got that many. It's okay to help a squirrel collect nuts. It's okay. <laughs> I'm so glad I know that. Okay. It's okay to have different type of friends. And it's okay to make a wish. How about, how about everyone? I'm gonna close, close your eyes right now and make a wish, just to yourself. I wish I weren't. I wish I had one. I wish I had ice cream. I wish I had a Lego set and I wish I had Let's all say this together. I wish I had It's okay to be different. You are special and important just because of being who you are. I chose some of the books because I went to uh, my local librarian and said, I want some books for this event. I need stories about being fancy, um, about um, dressing up, about... Um, loving yourself um, and about it's okay to be different, that kind of stuff. And my librarian gave me a big stack of books and said, take all of these, this is what you need. So that's how I picked out some books. Um, I have some books at home that I didn't bring today but that we've read before that are really fun that I just like to read and yeah, make me feel good. I like worms. Yeah. <laughs>